back with Northwestern Outdoors Radio. We're talking to Eileen Clark. She is the author of a really wonderful big game cookbook called Slice of the Wild Cut and Cook Game for Your Table. Eileen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm really glad to be on the, your show. Well, Eileen, you sent me a copy of this book, and I'm really taken with it. It's really a different sort of cookbook, and it basically takes the, you know, it's not just recipes. You basically tell us about the basic premise of dividing the recipes into sections based on where you butcher the meat from the animal you've taken. Very unique. How'd you come up with that idea? Well, John and I, for years, have played the game, uh, who are we eating at the table? <laughs> you know, he'll cook or I'll cook, and then we have to guess, you know, is it deer, is it mule deer, is it white tail, is it moose, whatever we have happen to have. Of course, we're cheating because we know it's in the freezer, but <laughs> we generally have a lot of different animals in there. So what became obvious was if it was moose, you could tell because there's larger grain. Sometimes with an elk, you could tell, but a lot of times you couldn't tell whether it was mule deer or white tail or antelope or whatever. So it became obvious that the really important thing, instead of what animal is this, is what part of the animal is it coming from? Because the most tender part of any animal is high and toward the back, and the least tender is as you move forward or you move down. So that seemed like the principle that, that the book should be based on. I love it. I really like it a lot. And folks, John that she's referring to is John Barsness. He is also an outdoors writer. He's the author of Modern Hunting Optics, who we're also talking to during this broadcast. But getting back to you, Eileen, and your book, Slice of the Wild, let's talk about your favorite big game animal to eat and, more importantly, what part of the animal that meat comes from. Oh, you're being unfair. I, don't I know. Like I know I am. <laughs> I would have to say moose is my favorite. Okay. By by a by a short margin, and the thing is, we don't get moose often. So then after that, I'd say white tail or antelope. I mean, it's it's all wonderful if you take good care of it. And as far as the best part, uh, a lot of people really like the tenderloin, but um, I've learned over the years that the rump actually has more flavor, and that's just like beef. You talk to an expert chef on, on beef, and they'll tell you that the tenderloin on a beef is, is very mild flavored, whereas rib steaks or, or a rump roast is much more flavorful. So that's what I like. You know, it's funny you mentioned moose. I've got a great memory of my father and I up in British Columbia at a fly-out uh, resort lodge. And the last night, we were the only guests there. And so the the host of the lodge said, hey, you know, would you mind if we go a little informal tonight and do Mexican night? I'm thinking, Mexican night, northern B.C.? This should be interesting. And we had moose burritos, and they were delicious. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so let's go ahead to the other extreme, because you cover this in the book, and I thought it was a really funny story. What's the worst piece of game you've ever had to prepare for the table? Uh, you're talking about John's muskox. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I had just gotten a food saver power marinator. So we went up to Northwest Territories. John shot this really old muskox. One horn was broken off, and he loves those kinds of animals that look weird in pictures. But he shot it. We took home a tenderloin and a hind quarter, and we put them in the freezer. And Well, we aged them, and then we went to cook part of the tenderloin. And I was looking at it, and it, it was obviously it was going to be tough. You can tell kind of by the density of the meat and the color a little. And so I thought, well, I'll try this new power marinator. So I did five minutes. That's what they recommended. Well, that didn't do anything. <laughs> and I went 10 minutes, and that didn't do anything. And so I figured, okay, half an hour. Let's give it another half hour. I finally ended up doing it for something like an hour. Oh, my gosh. And eventually the muskox came apart in grains. I mean, oh. you could pick them up. It was like long-grained rice. Oh. But you suck it in your mouth, and it was still tough. So we finally <laughs> just put it all in the grinder and served hammer. It tasted fine. It was just tougher than nails. Oh, my gosh. Folks, again, you're listening to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Again, we're talking to Eileen Clark. She hails from Townsend, Montana. She's the author of a great cookbook called Slice of the Wild that's very unique. And we've talked about, you know, some of the animals that you like to eat, an animal that didn't work out at all. And let's now talk about recipes. You know, can you share maybe 
a recipe that's easy for our listeners to remember so that they enjoy it too. And tell us what animal we're going to use it on. Okay, my the easiest one I know of that is the most spectacular, whether you have company or you're just making dinner for your your family, is something that's called grilled tenderloin stuffed with piggy salsa. And it's on page 105 in the book. And all you do is you take a tenderloin, and if you have an elk tenderloin, you want to use the, the hanging tenderloin rather than the, the larger piece above it. But a deer tenderloin is perfect, and you take like a 9-inch or 10-inch length, and you lay it on a cutting board, and you slice it in half as far as the depth. Okay. You want two pieces, top and bottom. And then you mix half a cup of breakfast sausage, half a cup of fresh salsa, mix them together, lay out like six pieces of bacon on your cutting board, put the bottom half of your tenderloin on it, then slather the salsa and sausage on top of that, and then put the top of the tenderloin back on, wrap the bacon tighten it with uh, toothpicks, and then you put it on the grill and cook it indirectly. Have the fire on one side, the meat on the other, at about 350. And when it gets to about 165 to 170, and that's for the pork, that's not for the, the wild meat, Okay. then it's ready. And it's just wonderful. Oh, it sounds melt-in-your-mouth delicious. I love it that. Is. You know, we're starting to run low on time, but before we go, I want to cover one more thing. This book isn't just about the recipes. You also cover what to do with your game from the time you shoot it to the time you get it to the table. And and that's really just as important, maybe more important, as the recipes inside the book, isn't it? It, it is. If, if you don't take care of it in the field and bring it to the kitchen in good shape, you're not going to have much left to cook. You're going to be stuck with chili and not much else. So it's very important. All right, last but not least, where can folks buy these books? And is there a website so they can find out more? Yes, there is a website. It's uh, www.riflesandrecipes.com, and and is all spelled out. Or people can call me at 406-521-0273, and I do take orders over the phone. Okay, and what is the price point for this wonderful cookbook, Slice of the Wild? Well, right now it's in hardcover at twenty nine ninety five, but we're about to reprint it in soft cover, and I'm sure it'll be a little less. We don't know yet. I have to talk to the printer. Well, there you go. So give Eileen a call. The phone number again, 406-521-0273. That's 406-521-0273. Or just go to their really easy-to-remember website, riflesandrecipes.com. Got to love that, riflesandrecipes.com. Eileen, thanks for sharing this great information and for joining us today on Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Thank you, John. 